Hello everyone, this is Grindcore with part 3 of the Thin Red Line. In this video I'll be focusing on uh, building reads and taking notes. I'm just sit down at two tables, I'm completely readless on all of these players. Maybe I'll have some very old uh, uh, hands on them. But probably not. Uh, when taking notes, um, I always try to note anything that um, that I wouldn't expect of a player. But even if a player does something that you would expect an unknown to do, um, just noting it to confirm that he does it uh, might actually be worth it. I, I take my notes in the Holder Manager note system, not in the client side note system. Um, that's so that you can. Uh, have your notes with you in the Holder Manager replayer. And right now this player, he for example, he limp folded. So that's something that I'm going to note, that he will be falling when he when he limps. Uh, when I take my notes, I usually first write down the, the date and the game type. And then I copy paste it. Including uh, an enter, I want to write my notes under this and I copy paste the enter. So whenever I take a new note on someone, I can just hit Ctrl V on my keyboard and whenever I start typing, it appears uh, under there immediately. And in this um, this box over here, it's the, the last three hands played. If you don't have it, you can turn it on uh -huh. in Holder Manager. If you if you click a player name, then you get the Holder Manager hand history window. And um, here here you can see hand histories. So whenever you're you're playing more tables and your um, card that you folded preflop all over the place, um, just look at all your tables to see if there's any any medium to large pots that you missed. In particular, pots with a showdown. And then uh, just go over the hand history and take notes while you're not really doing anything. Things that I um, like to note are stuff like how do they play draws, how do they play certain board textures, how do they play second pair type hands, how do they play their monsters. Um, timing tells, bet sizing tells also really important. Uh, a way to pick up on bet sizing tells is to um, make a note of any bet size that you find unusual and then see if it's standard for them or not in the future. Like here he bets uh, $3 into 7 This, So what do I think this could be? This could be a c-bet with a hand like an 8. I think this would be unusual c-bet size for an overpair or something. It could be a draw, it could be an 8 I think and it could be air. It could also be a queen that he just underbets it. Um, but it, like for example, if he overbets now, then it's pretty likely to be an eight. But he bets pretty small again. I'm just gonna call him down. No real point in raising. So he did do it with top pair, top kicker. So that's something that I'm gonna note. Um, here I'm gonna back raise all in. I think this is pretty standard. This is a really good squeeze spot for him. And um, well, just a spot where you pick up uh, a lot of money. And since most people don't really squeeze with um, hands like pocket eights or lower, um, you 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 can essentially shove um, pocket deuces as well. They're almost the same hand as pocket nines. The only difference is that if this guy ever flats to squeeze with sevens and then flats back raise all in, then pocket nines is of course a lot better hand than um, pocket deuces. But usually they're they're roughly the same hand, and it's pretty standard in that spot to back raise all in with uh, with with any pair unless you have reads that um, these plays are tight or something. But against a bunch of regulars, it's probably fine. So this guy, um, uh, 
uh, way to note bad sizing. Um, personally, I noted this. Uh, this means that that he bet three dollars into um, seven point five. So it's the bet size and the pot size. Mm. You can both flat and squeeze here. I think this guy is probably fish, so that makes squeezing better. Oops, <laughs> I timed out there. Didn't mean for that. Um. So now that we know that this player um, underbets for value, how do we make use of the note in the future? I wouldn't immediately stop bluff catching the next time that he does it, because it might be a standard bet size with everything that he plays. Um, um, you know, folding bluff catchers to when you're getting good good pot odds, when there are a lot of bluffs in his range, that's a potential huge mistake. So until it's confirmed that he only does it for value, um, I'm just going to keep calling him down. But in, in the future, let's say um, we play exactly the same hand. He raises, I call with sixes, the flop comes exactly the same, and now you see bet six dollars. Now I'm way more like, uh, inclined to call down multiple streets or even to raise him at some point because if he's making those small bets for value, then the larger bets have to be error draws. And Pocket sixes is pretty invulnerable, with pretty much any holding of him being two over cards, and especially when he can have uh, a gut shelter flush rolls or whatever with that. My hand is just pretty vulnerable. I'm just assuming that any regular at uh, these levels will be playing um, too tight in blind versus blind. So, you know, for, for my um, three, three x open to be um, not plus if, he, plus if he has a pure steal, he has to be playing about 40% of his hands or more. And I don't think any unknown regular is doing that. So I usually start out by literally opening any two cards in a small blind. So that's why I, uh, I opened nine do suited there. Uh, I'm not going to bet to protect here when he doesn't see bet the flop. Because he could be check calling with nines through jacks, and also if he has a hand with overs, ace king. I think he probably um, you know, he would probably see by that anyway. But even if he doesn't, sure there are two over cards, but an ace is a money card for me because then I'm gonna stack ace king with my two pair. So he's really only drawing to three outs if he has over cards. So. Just checking down here is pretty good. And I think if I check back the flop, he would have bet the turn with nines plus. So now I'm going to value bet. Um, the question is, do I want to value bet large? To get called by a weaker eight or something that he um, squeezed? Or am I going to... Um, <laughs> I meant to see about this. I'll just check raise it now. Hope that he falls. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go for the larger value bet. I could... I could also bet really small to get a call from Ace King. If you have a read on him that he always has Ace King, you can just bet somewhere like five dollars, and nobody is capable of folding, uh, folding Ace King to that. Um, I think I'm just gonna check fold here. I could try triple barreling, trying to represent the flush, but. <laughs> yeah, he didn't even. Uh, value bet trips there and just put me on the flush roll. That's probably something I could note. And um, he just left the table with something to note about um, this hand is that he and it's good to know that he gives up on um, 
on, on, on dry rainbow board as the preval bracer with initiative because this is a very good board to make a continuation bet on but he didn't so normally i don't give continuation bets much credit here and i would definitely have called the c bet with the ace 8 and probably call a turn bet as well um but if he in, if he in the future c bets this board um, i know that his range is much stronger than i would expect a normal player to be And I'd be giving him more credit. You know, call one is definitely full turn if he bets again. And maybe with better reads, even full to turn. Uh, full to flop, I mean. I'm folding the suited connector here because there are a bunch of short stacks behind. Um... With better reads, I could definitely... This spot where reads would be really useful when he check raises this flop. A lot of people don't really check raise for value here. If they have something like a set, they just check call to let me barrel. Uh, check raises are very often draws, and I beat draws. And it could be a bluff. So this is a decent spot to shove ace high, because you get called by flush draws and straight draws that you flip against. And you fall out as air. But he does make a big check raise. He... Um, he, he could go smaller, but he made it fairly big, and I have no reads on him. I, f I think when he makes it that size, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I think he's very often calling a shove. And when I'm either flipping or beats, then it might not be worth to get the stack in to flip over uh, um, the dead money. And maybe I'm always beat there. Um, I don't know that yet. But I, I'm going to note um, that he did that. Um, If you if you click the the pot size, then you get this, uh, you get to see the board and the whole cards and whatever. And if you click the player name, then you get uh, the Hunters Republic. In case you didn't know. So this is not really a tendency. This is just noting whatever he did. Uh, he did is not really a, a real read yet. It's just something that happened. Um, This is not as useful. Um, you, know, you always want to be noting player tendencies and actual, actual reads on them that will help you in future hands. Uh, note, like, like just noting the hand history and, not, and nothing else really, um, that will help you in the future get, get a read. For example, if you have several of these notes where he check raises, or um, I'll probably also note, uh, note the sizing here. Um, when I noted like this, I mean that he raised um, 35 over my $10 bet into 17. It's just, you know, you can use whatever system uh, system you want, but just use something so that you know yourself what you mean and that it's easy to write. I think this is a easy, pretty easy way to write it. Um, this player just limp folded, so I'm going to note that as well. Um, so, for example, if I see him check raise smaller in the future and I get it in and it turned out to be a set or something, then um, whenever I have ace high in the future and then he makes it 35 again, I'm way more inclined to shove now because I know that he would make it smaller with his value hands. Um, okay, two things I can do here. I can either barrel off or I can go for a check raise. I think I'm going for a check raise. Um... No, wait, my bad. I think I should actually barrel here. Um, I'll explain why. I I assume that this was blind versus blind when I said that. Um, but it wasn't blind versus blind because this guy limped and then I made a big race and he called. Okay, so do I value bet? No, I should just check here and give up. Uh -huh. Let's see what yeah, probably something like ace5 suited. Ace4 suited, yeah. Um, 
Because this guy limped and I isolated that limp from the small blind, my opening range is a lot stronger. And um, therefore his calling range should be should be stronger. And then when I see about this board, um, his calling range will be more king heavy than normal. You know, but if he has a hand like king jack or something, he won't rebat it pre-flop. He will just flat and then flat to him over call with his weak range or whatever. So he has m more kings in his range. He'll also be falling more junk, which increases his uh, king x frequency. Um, and also a lot of pocket pairs. And those pocket pairs I can probably get to fault on this turn if I if I bet twice. And on top of that I have a very high equity draw. And I can just... Um... So yeah, as you see on the turn I had... Um... Um... I had no mate hand, but we were actually still flipping. So I should definitely have barreled the turn. Um... When this guy cold calls a 3 bet and then leads the flop, he probably just has something like ace, ace queen, king queen suited, um, jacks that he's under betting and then calling a shelf with or whatever. So I'm just going to let him have it there. Um, also know that this guy cold called. Um, that's pretty fishy, so he's likely fish. You can also um, put color notes on people, kind of like you can in Full Tilt. There's actually a program out there that replaces all these silly icons with uh, more of the Full Tilt colors. So, uh, Personally, I, I use um, color labels. Um, I put green on the, you know, the fishy, the passive players. Um, Red on very aggressive players. Um, orange on players that never fold. Yellow on people who fold a lot. You know, uh, weaker players. Uh, the dark blue on post-flop knits. Or, and and pre-flop knits. Uh, just knits in general. And the purple I, I put on uh, the biggest of fish. Um, you know, drunk maniac style fish. or you're Just really, really poor players. Um, but you you can use whatever uh, you know whatever color system you want as, as long as it's logical to you. Okay, um, I just missed this hand, but I saw there was a medium-sized pot here, so I'm just checking it out now. Um, Wrangler defended his small blinds, and then he checked min raised, um, somewhat coordinated. Not really coordinated board, but um, he check he check min raised it. So I'm just noting that he did it. It's not really a tendency read yet. Um, I don't know what hand he had. Um, these players seem fishy, so I'm not worried about getting three bet. So he, on this table, I'm just gonna open to three x instead of two point five. Uh, 2.5 is only something I do against um, against regulars when I might get 3 bet. Then here is kind of bad card because it connects with all his gut shots and straight rolls and whatever. Also, in that um, that three bet pot where he called called, he donk bet the flop, so he probably donk bets if he had a nine. Yeah, I'm just gonna. Huh, that's a nice card. Now, when he bets, do I raise him or not? Your six seven got there, queen jack got there. <laughs> Over bet shelf. Could be a busted flush draw. Could be ace eight. Let's see. Eight nine is a boat, eight ten is a boat, I think this is a fault. Yeah, with all the straights getting there, I think that's a fault. He might fail you off some worse hands, but mostly better hands.
I could swear I just took a note on this guy that he called called the, tr the three bet with a short stack or is a new player. Nope. Maybe I took that note on the wrong player. Uh, now I am going to make it 2.5x uh, and that's because of this player being a short stack. Uh, he could just be a fish with a short stack instead of an actual short stacker but I don't want him to just um, you know, jam on me and then uh, me having to fold a lot. I want to open wide on the button and if he's going to play push fold against it I want to lose the minimum whenever I'm folding. Uh, whenever I have, uh, whenever you, you note a bunch of um, hand histories, what happens? As soon as you can get a, a confirmed read from that, just remove those hand histories and write a confirmed read. For example, uh, once you're sure that he donk bets with top pair, then um, remove this note and then just note, uh, note it like that. And if you have a suspicion that he might do it. Um, but it's not confirmed yet, then just note it like this as well, but then put a question mark behind it. And when you're, um, you know, well, as soon as it's confirmed, you just backspace the question mark. So here I have a suspicion that he. That he, that he does that. Um, that, that he overbet jams, uh, that he overbet jams a straight or a boat there or something. And I put a question mark behind it because it might have been a busted flush draw or something. Um, but that's probably gonna, but it, it was probably a huge hand. And this player is also definitely a fish, so I'll give him the, the green label. player as well. And this player as well. Lots of um, straight possibilities on, on this board. It's almost impossible for him not to have some sort of gut shot here. Um, so I, I could opt to check back the ace high. But what I can also do is um, is double barrel. Um, we have seen him donk pet once. It could have been a top pair. So if he has um, a 6 or a gut shot. Yeah, or a 10 of course. Then with a the double barrel I probably get him to fold the gut shots and, and the 6. Now that the flush hit it's getting kinda close I think I'm still gonna I'm still gonna bet big here and then check back the river. This is just to fold out the 6 and to get value from any potential gut shot that um, turned the flush draw and then check back the river. This is the second time that, that he just shoves the river. Um, a typical slow play line for fish though is to check call, check call, open shelf. Um, it, it it might be a flush here. Also, um, some of the straight rolls hit like set seven, eight off suit with a heart or something that just hit on the river.
uh, they should make me less inclined um, to value bet thin on the turn because if he's going to open shelf the river then I'm going to be in a hard spot so in, in future if I'm in a spot like that where I pick up the showdown value on the turn I should probably just um, check it back He called pretty quickly, um, so quick that it looks like his hand wasn't very strong. I think if he had a premium hand, like Aces, it would have taken a while to think about whether he should um, re-raise or not. So I'm going to make a, a small value raise here. Just to fall out his random overcards like King-Queen that I'm flipping against. Um, he's so bad that for a min race, I'm definitely going to take a flop here. Uh, a, way, a way that you can note uh, hand history is easy. Um, I already showed you guys the, the bad size thing. Uh, to note boards. Um, to, to note board textures in particular, uh, a lot of people note the exact board, but really all that matters uh, are the main cards. For example, this, this board right here is not ace for five, it's ace xx. And you know, the four and the five are slightly connected, so um, I guess maybe you can note the four or five, but very often you can just um, om omit cards from the board and only show the hand. Uh, you know, the cards that really matter. Like this was an ace high board with some racks, so you just know it as ace xx. Um, boards with a flush draw, flush draw on it, like this one, this would be um, um, uh, 5 4 2 or 4 2 5. Usually I know it in order from the largest to the smallest card, um, but <laughs> that's just some weird personal preference. Um, then you just note uh, an S behind it for suited. Um, if it's monotone, then you note an M, and if it's a rainbow, you note an R. And if the turn card breaks, like for example, um, you know, like an offsuit 9, just note it a 9, but when it would be the 9 of the flush draw on the flop, then you can put another uh, S behind it. And if a board is double suited, like if the, if the 9 would make a second flush draw, then you can note it as, as this, and then put two S's behind it for double suited. At least that's how I do it, and of course you can do it any way you want. Um, but as long as, as it's clear to yourself and easy to type, um, especially when multi-tabling, taking notes uh, takes time. And you're, when you're multi-tabling, yeah, you don't have much time in general. And also when you're facing a river decision or something, and you're quickly checking your notes on the player, if if you have huge hand histories and whatever all over the place it, it's really uh hard to read but if you have you know an, an easy note system which makes them small and uh uh if what, which makes them small and clear i think i'm gonna lead here he could be checking back a lot of hands for pot control here, but he's also likely giving up with a lot of air because the board is so coordinated. I'm just going to check for pot control here. A pair, any hand better than mine is not going anywhere, and he probably folds weaker hands when a double barrel, and the board is so dry, there aren't really any draws that I have to protect against. Um, so now do I pay it off on the river here? Let's see. He probably checks a four. Five and six is just made sets. 
He could have the queen. He does bet fairly small though. Um, <laughs> I'm used to uh, to eye poker where you have slightly more time and no time bank. <laughs> so I, I had up time and falling quite a bit on full tilt. I think it's close. Um, w w with a wreath on his bet sizing, uh, it could have been an, uh, an easy call or an easy fold. Um, with reads on his how thin he value bets or his flop check call in range, it, w it would be easier. Um, I think folding here is probably fine. Normally, I I, I would. Yeah, flatting is actually fine. I could three bet it as well, but there's a uh, fish sitting here in the blind, and this player also seems to be kind of fishy, so I'd rather flat and keep them in the pot. Um, nice trick when it checks to you and you're on the button in a multi way pot. Um, a really nice way to bluff is to bet like one third pot. This only has to work a quarter of the time. And the preflop raisers usually check folding, and the, the players in the blinds are um, usually also just playing fit or fold against it. So it's just a really nice, uh, nice cheap bluff. It is almost the same fold equity as a larger bet. Uh, when this fish check calls, could be a flush draw. Could be top pair. Now reads would be really useful. Some fish would shove a flush draw on the flop all the time. Some fish would shove a jack on the flop all the time. Um, Okay, now I have a very easy fault now that the flush draw hit. He's definitely going to show off here. Either as a jack, trips, or a flush. So if he checks, he probably has a tree. And I should. Yeah, I think I should probably bluff at it. Maybe he checks checks a jack, though. Um, I'll, I'll just take the showdown to get a better read on him. Okay, so he had an ace high. Um. Oh, he had a gut shot, so that explains that. Um, but that's not even noteworthy. I would totally expect him to check call and like ace twos there. Just gonna call here to get in a spot. This is of course a fold preflop, but um Now this is a board that he will probably see better with all his air, but not if he has a queen or a pocket kings or pocket jacks or something. Um and because he raised early possession. Uh, my call here on this board looks pretty strong, so I don't think he will bluff me on the turn. I think he will check fault with all his air. So, um, you know, he, he seems to be a regular, and my default assumption about any regular at these stakes is that they will pretty much always bluff at the flop, but on the turn they're going to be pretty honest, out of position. Um, so those are in general really good boards to float. And... Um, don't don't just float with anything, uh, but here I, I floated because I have uh, a backdoor straight draw. Whenever I hit a, uh, a six, I can I guess a ten is kind of bad because he could have king jack. And normally I don't even flat this preflop. If this was ace nine of uh, eight nine suited with the backdoor flush draw, then I would have floated there. And here I kind of floated just to. Um, see if he would check fault the turn. Uh, I meant to make this um, 3, 4 is fine as well. I just misclicked because I'm not used to this software. Uh, again, I'm just going to call to get in a this, in this spot that's probably a fault. Um, 
I could see bad. I could check to take the show uh, the showdown. He seems to be pretty aggro so far. So I'm just gonna check for pot control and then bluff catch on the later streets. Um, now that he checks twice, I'm just gonna make a protection bet. Yeah, it seems like he had the fall to any button tagged. And that's good to know. This kind of marginal because of the short segment. Yeah, actually, I'll make it four dollars. Just hoping that he folds. This is probably actually a fold preflop, but when he doesn't raise the button with the big fish in the blind, he can't have a strong hand. So any board with overcards to mine hand, he can't really hit. Like this board, he he can never hit. And um, I'll prove it by just making an undersea bet here. See. <laughs> Snap fault. Only make a 3.5 instead of 4 here just because the board is so dry. And his preflop calling range is wide. He has a lot of hands that are pure air here. Most fish tend to um, check snap call when they have something like a 4 or pocket 6s. He checked tank called. So he's either multi-tabling, or he has a 10 and he was not sure what to do, or a flush troll and he was not sure what to do. And maybe it could be ace high. Now that I pick up the gut shot, it's kinda close. I think I'll take the free card, I think it's too risky that he has, um, has a 10 there. If he called the flop really quick, then I would have barreled a 9, because I don't think he can be that strong when he checks snap calls. But when he takes a ball, it's just... You know, it's kind of weird. On a board this dry, they usually have uh, uh, an easier decision with a bluff catcher. I'll actually see if he's multi-tabling, he does have the, the Iron, Iron Man thingy. No, he's only playing two tables. Yeah, maybe he was in the spot on the other table. Um. I'll just put it as a suspicion. Could flat here, but um, yeah, I should probably have flat call because of the fishy player in the, in the big blind who can then come along. This hand plays pretty well multi way. Um, this player is pretty weak. Um, you know, he underbets with uh, top pair, top kicker, used to fall to any button. So I'm going to give him the, the yellow label, which is players who you know are weak post flop fold a lot. Just going to three bet him again. 
any ace or king in blind versus blind is decent to 3 bet. This guy is pretty tight, but um, <laughs> that's interesting, he makes a very small 4 bet. Uh, this hand is so horrible, I'm going to fall to it anyway. But this format is so small that with these stack sizes, I would be flatting this quite a bunch. If he wants me to put, if he wants to put me in a push or fold spot, then he's gonna have to pay for it. I haven't made a single three bet at this table yet. That's why I three bet the, the queen nine suited there. Against button, I would probably have called. Against cutoff, probably fold. Or three bet. And this guy is pretty tight, but he is. Um, you know, we've already folded to one three bet. He was 100% folded three bet so far. And um, that's one of the stronger hands that I'm that I'm folding. Um, here I'm gonna three bet again, and that's just because I've three bet him like three times in a row already. It's easier to um, trash an image. Than it is to um, ruin it. Uh, than than this to, uh, to to get a good image. It's it's easier to ruin in, an image than to repair it. So once your image is starting to get bad, it's quite often worth it to intentionally make it um, you know really 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 bad. So you know, uh, having a neutral image is kind of useless. Having a very good image is great because you can run a lot of bluffs. And having a horrible image is great because you can get a lot of value. Anything in between is kind kind of useless. So whenever you have just kind of ruined your image and you get an opportunity to ruin it even more, then you should just go for it because it's going to be more profitable to have um, you know an extreme image. line I could have taken on this board is to check call because when I check this flop it looks like I'm check falling so he will bluff all his air and also because he called my under the gun race and he's pretty tight he likely has uh, a tight calling range there um, deuces sixes and eights have a set he's probably folding fives to threes to the c-bet anyway um, so really the only hand to get value from is ace eight suited and sevens and I just get called by um, sets over pairs and raised by flush rolls or something. So it's not that great of a spot um, to see bet from my hand. But I do fold out random over cards. Uh, but, but by check calling, I can get value. You know, when I check here, he'll probably bet pocket trees to protect. He will bet all his over cards. Um, so yeah, this would be an okay spot to, uh, to check call. Uh, with nines, with, with a strong hand like queens or something, I would definitely, definitely see that 100% there. Well, not necessarily 100%. You can um, still check all there, or um, even go for a check raise because you will induce a bet from you know, all this air, and then you can, you can, uh, you can, you can check raise. It's also a decent board to check race, um, you know, draws or ace king or whatever on as the, as the preflop racer. This guy could be an actual short stacker. I'll see how many tails he's playing. Yeah, 
yeah he's playing a ton of tables so this guy is an actual short stacker um, kind of sucks to have an actual short stacker on my left still gonna isolate this guy with marginal hand though um, but in the future I'm just gonna min raise 100% in blind versus blind because he's um, likely push folding against um, against my min raise and the min raise has to work like half the time or something um, you know and there's no way that he's actually push folding with 50% of his hand he's gonna be push folding tighter so I just automatically profit by ra min raising 7 deuce off suit there um, this player is not c banning much so far could op I could try leading here, but I don't really represent much by leading, only a draw. Yeah, I think it's still better to um, go for a check raise or a check call. But normally, yeah, I, f I think it's better to check call. A check raise looks too much like a draw here, I think, because with um, King Queen or something, I would probably have squeezed preflop. Uh, yeah, I only wrap pocket eights for value, so. I think check call is better, and also this guy hasn't been c-banning much, so his um, um, c-banning range should be stronger, uh, just giving me less fall equity. Now it's very tempting to check raise on on this card when he fires the second barrel, but I think when he fires the second barrel, it's always a value hand, and I just don't think he will. You know, he will. He will. He will I don't think he will fold a uh, value hand to um, to a check raise here. So I'm just gonna check all twice. My hand, my hand is so huge. Even against a set or something, I have like 40% equity here. I think so. I, I am definitely priced into um, check all twice, and especially if if I river uh, a four. He's <laughs> he's never gonna see that coming. A club, he's probably gonna see coming, but um, um, he's never gonna see the uh, see the straights coming. So yeah, he had aces. Um, I'm gonna note that he see, but eight into ten with an overpair, and he bet pretty small on the turn. So eight into ten, then eighteen into twenty-seven. Bet pretty small on the turn. I think if he had someone like King Queen, he would bet larger. I have a gut shot. I think I'm gonna raise him here. Don't really represent that much, but he's just a pretty weak player. Yeah, there you go. And his bet size, I just didn't really believe that. And I'm gonna take a note. Um, you know, it, it was likely a bluff. He could be so tight that he that he folds someone like Queen Jack there, but I think my image is so bad that um, he won't be folding any any top pair or better to me. Um, so I'm pretty sure that this double barrel was a bluff. Uh, so I'm gonna note that he did that. Um, another way you can note the bet size is um, in percentage of the pot. Like he bet, you know, like sixty percent. Um, so, so this is this another way you can note it. This is normally a fault, but I'm just opening it because I'm not in any spots. I should have made this 2.5 because of the short stack. Actually, 3x is okay, but kind of depends on the short stack and the players in the blinds
So now that he know that he has this face up um, bluff size, he'll probably also have a face up value size. Now it's possible that this is his standard um, value bet size as well, but I, d I don't think it is. It's it's more likely to be a bluff like 100% of the time, and with value, you would probably bet on like 80% pot or more. Um, let's see, he double barreled once before. Let's see if we can find that hand. And just quickly uh, finding that hand in Holder Manager. Um, I selected his screen name and in, uh, in filters, you just go to more filters, uh, and scroll down to the turn filters and turn continue turn continuation bet mate is true. Same and close. Um, I think this is a fault. Can't really set mine here because of the short stacks. And this guy's probably also really strong here. So Okay, so this was the hand where I double barreled. Yeah, here you see that's slightly larger. It was still a still a pretty small one. So um Maybe it's a standard size. Let's see, 8 into 14, 13, 30 into 20. Hmm. Maybe it was bluffing there as well. Short stacks tend to push really light over um, when when they're in sitting in the blinds, they push really light over cut off and button opens, and when they're in the big blind, they push really light over small blind opens. But when they're on the bottom themselves, they push tighter over cut off opens, and especially against earlier position opens, they push really tight. So whenever you have short stacks on your left, you can actually play. Um, really loose unless the short stacks are in the blinds and you're in late position but any other scenario I'm like there with him on the button and me in the cutoff I can just open king do suited and from middle position I can just open king 10 off that's no problem um, I think with the reads that we have on him that he plays uh, we have these value bet sizing tells and he's so weak we can just flat here and outplay him post flop Interesting, we know that he um, bets small with top pair, top kicker, so this is probably not a value bet. So I can't just jam over here, but the thing is, if it's not a value bet, I'm only losing to better ace x. So I think it's better to call here and then um, uh, jam the turn. You know, it gives him a chance to bluff once more. Could even be a draw, which I'm beating. I think we're gonna shove here, even though this looks suicidal. Just don't think. Wow, that's interesting. So here you see my uh, uh, my read on this bet sizing was completely off. It's interesting that he is um, that he flat my min raise. A lot of short stacks are incapable of doing that. And when they do flat, they usually have, um, in my experience, connected medium hands like nine ten off or something. Well, he did it with queen six. Um, I check I check all the turn there because I just get value from his floats and I don't fold out any better hands. And I think when I double barrel, 
Um, he, he doesn't have any trees in his preflop calling range, I think. So, um... Uh, with a... Uh, I don't really get value from anything either with with, uh, with a double barrel. So I just go for the double check hole to get maximum value from his floats and yeah, that's exactly what happened. Uh, I, I to note short stack I just write um, SS and then I know it's from a short stagger. If he starts um, flatting min races, if I don't put him in a push fault spot with that, then I'm gonna have to increase my race size to 2.5x because I really want him to um, uh, to push fault because then I can start opening any two cards again. If he knows that I'm opening any two cards and he adjusts his shoving range appropriately, then I have to stop doing it. But most short stacks are um, are exploitable in that way. Uh, the video is approaching about one hour, so I'll um, finish up the orbits. Um, this kind of sucks. I did make a big race, and there's the limp. Yeah, I'm getting pretty good bottles here, so I'm just going to call it off with Ace 8. Had I just made a 3x race, not over, there was no limp, and then he jams, that is, uh, then it's a fault. So um, one reason that could explain this player's um, pot betting with the nines, but betting small with the top pair top kicker, you might have thought that his pocket nines were really vulnerable there, while his um, ace queen there was, you know, basically the nuts on that board. So the board was dry, and his top pair top kicker, um, only one overcard, the king that that he mines, and the other card is fine with him. But with the nines. Um, You know, there were draws out there, and a lot of overcards, and that's why he was uh, pot betting. So, um, I have now, now I have a suspicion on him that he. These are my two suspicions, and as soon as um, I confirm these reads, I will backspace the question marks, and I will um, remove these two nodes. Um, all right. So let me know if you had any questions about uh, about the video. Uh, I hope it was useful. I would encourage you guys, um, if if you're not that good at note taking, to really try it out for a session and reduce the amount of tables that you're, that you're playing. If you normally play 10 tables, then, um, or just just for anyone, I would recommend not playing more than four tables when you're trying to practice uh, improving your note taking. Uh, you should play no more than four tables. And if you're already, if you normally play four tables and just play two tables or whatever, and really try to take as many notes as possible. Um, also a thing that you can do in this window um, if you click this checkbox, you mark a hand, and any hand 
where you make a play that you normally wouldn't based on one of the notes you took, just mark the hand because it's almost always an, an interesting hand. And um, then later in, during the session review in Holder Manager, um, you can use this um, show only show marked hand box, and you you get all the mark, marked hands there. And uh, reviewing those hands is generally pretty interesting because they're always unusual hands where you had reads and you were really exploiting your opponent. Right, so um, looking forward to your questions. This was Grindcore for Deuces Crack signing off. Uh, one last thing. After finishing the session, I remembered this hand history and I thought it was interesting to show. Um, this is the hand history and these were the uh, the stats and uh, notes that I had on Twilen. Uh, I want you guys to guess what his range is on the river and post it in the in video thread. Um, I raise cut off, he calls button. I see bet the flop and he snap called the see bet. I double barrel, he snap called the second barrel. And when I check the river, he snap bet half pot. And this was everything that I had on him. So uh, post what you think his betting range is on the river. And uh, what is the weakest hand that you call him with on the river? So if we're going to check call, what is the, the weakest hand that we can profitably call? Alright, looking forward to your answers. See ya.